someone please think of the children? Hey everyone, Rachel with Two Bats Gaming here. So you've all been asking for some painting vids of the Arena of the Planeswalkers minis, so here you go. We're going to be painting the Avacyn Inquisitor Squad figures, and rather than just a regular old painting vid, because there's a million of those out there, we're going to be using the opportunity to see if there's any real difference in between painting with the cheap acrylic paints or the acrylic paint made specifically for mini painting. What I mean by the cheap acrylic paints is the little 50 cents to a dollar bottle crafts paint. You can get it like Walmart or Michaels or whatever. You know, the folk art, apple barrel, that sort of cheapo shit. So this week we're going to paint one of the units with the cheap stuff. And in our next episode coming out next week, we'll go over one of the other units with some of the quote unquote decent paint. Specifically, we'll be using the Vallejo game colors. Uh, then we'll compare and contrast the two models and see if the more expensive stuff really is worth it. And also, just to let you guys know that I'm not completely talking out my ass, I'm relatively new to mini painting, but I am a professional painter. I work mainly in oils, some watercolor. If you're interested, I'd love if you could check out my site at recartworks.com or follow me on Instagram at recartworks. All right, shameless plugging aside, let's jump right in and see if the cheap paints can stand up to the good stuff. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and start with the lighter colors because the whites might take a couple of coats. You want to do them really thin, so sometimes it takes a little to cover it. That's why we primed them in gray so that the white would show up better, go for more of a mid-tone. Remember, you want to get a good base coat of whatever basic color you want, because you can dirty it up later if you want. Can do the mask. All right, so the Craft Smart White is a little odd. It's very thin already, which is kind of nice. I would almost describe it as foamy. That sounds upsetting, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not my favorite. I might have to find a new one. All right. So let the white dry. And let's go to his little shoulder pads. So I got what is called Golden Sunset from the Apple Barrel. It was, I think, all of 50 cents. And it's kind of un... Oh, what's the word? I really do forget. I got nothing. Sometimes you might get a little... When you're thinning acrylic paints with water, they tend to get a little bit bubbly, like the surface tension of the water messes with it and can make it go places you don't want it to. So if that happens, just get a little bit, rinse your brush off and get a little bit of water and it should come off. Because the acrylic dries pretty quickly, so if it gets onto another color, if you're quick about it, you can you can wipe it off and it's okay. And then just do another coat. All right, so while I'm doing the base coats on him, I, I wanna talk about brush choice because it actually does make a huge difference. And one of the things I see with a lot of people new to painting is that they use the wrong brush for the wrong thing. So here's what I'm using for the base coat. Don't worry, Forrest is going to edit in a much better shot to show you what the hell I'm talking about. But this one's a long and it's long and skinny so that I can get into the tiny parts of the of the model. But it's not it's not a big fat one and it's not little and stubby. It gives you a pretty good 
amount of paint reservoir in it that you can keep going and cover what you need to cover for the most part. The bigger ones are good for bigger areas, obviously. But you're going to, like, the longer, softer ones are going to give you more brush strokes than if you use a dry brush with something shorter. But I'll kind of get into a little bit more of that as we get into the dry brushing and the detail work. So just figured I'd go ahead and put that in your brain. Let's see. So next let's do the leathery part. I'm using a Van Dyke brown, which is a little bit of a reddish brown. Um, sienna or burnt sienna is also another good choice for the reddish colors. And that, I mean, see, I made that a little bit too thin. It's starting to just pool up. All right, so, see, I didn't pin thin the paint quite as much as I should have on this one when I was putting in the leather. So you can dry off your brush and just go back in. And the brush dried off will just kind of suck the paint back out of the cracks. So later when you want to put a wash in, it'll settle in there correctly and show you, show off all the really good details. All right. So the cheap paint so far, so good. Um, I'm not getting the greatest coverage, but I expected to have to make a couple of coats on some of the colors, like the lighter things. Um, it's hard to say without the comparison yet. We'll know more next week. Let's go ahead and start another coat of the white. Cause that's pretty streaky right now. Not every part of the model will you be able to achieve it, but when you're doing a second coat, if you can paint across the grain that you painted in the first place, you'll get less brush strokes and a more even surface. Or you can use the brush strokes to your advantage and paint in the direction of the object that you are trying to mimic. So if it's fabric, go along the fabric folds. If it's grass, you know, you want that kind of grassy texture. So don't go in only one direction. You can kind of vary it up a little bit. So I'm trying to keep this little guy in focus, but uh, the angle is difficult sometimes. It doesn't really show too well on the card for the figure, but since it's a white figure, I like making it go along with it, so uh, make it easily identifiable. I'm gonna use a whiter, flatter brush on this part just because it's a big, flat area. Make it nice and easy on myself. All right, so we're going to do his head, which is the only skin showing. And normally I'd use like a portrait pink or a flesh tone, something like that in the mix. But I really feel like he's never been in the sun. Only goes out at night or lives in, in dungeons and monasteries. Since I've been mixing, I got a little too much paint on my brush. So I'm going to wipe it off and then just a little bit. You know, oop, very, very carefully, more careful than I just did. Try and get around his mask. His head probably is going to take a couple coats. He's so tiny. All right, apparently you cannot be impatient with the crappy white. See, it's getting, I don't know, it's getting like almost sticky. So I might want to let it dry a little bit longer before the next coat. All right, so while the white on the cape dries, 
we're going to go over some of the raised details that are on his little leather suit. We're going to see for this, you can use more of a dry brushing. So you want to use something short and stubby. Um, you don't, you want to make sure the brush is as dry as you can because otherwise it'll flow into the cracks that you don't want it. But if you go over the raised details very lightly with a dry brush, it'll bring them out really well. So you see these little gold buttons? You just really lightly. You can use a little bit of the, the golds And some of the ivory make it a little bit lighter. And you can just go ever so slightly over the textured areas. We'll do a wash over it later so it won't be quite as bright as it looks right now. Um, but this way you can see where you're going and what you're trying to get to. Yeah, see how much better you can see his fingers now? The important thing about painting in general, anything, a painting painting on canvas or wood or an object, you want to have a full value range. You want to have the darkest darks and then mid-tones and then highlights. And on the mini, since it's an object and the details are so small, having a little extra highlight here and there really helps it stand out. Okay, I'm thinning this paint a good bit to the point that if I go any farther, it just puddles and it's still being awfully sticky and thick. I guess that's what I get for paying 50 cents. Alright, so maybe I need to think about if I should, kind of like the wash videos we did, if I mix the uh, matte medium with it instead of water to thin it, if that would help the situation or not. Things worth trying. Alright, let's do the weapons. I'm using the Folk Art Gunmetal Silver. Which actually is a good base coat. Just gives a little bit more shine, a little more of a metallic sheen to it, to the gray. And it's pretty thin already, which makes it really, really easy to work with. Okay. The hair does not. All right, so there's most of the base coat done. Let's get a little more. Keep is being something of a bitch. But it'll be cool by the time we're done. So in the parts that stand out prominently, you, want, you can do a really bright white. In some of the indentions, you can add a little bit of ivory, or if you want to go cooler, a little bit of blue. All right, so there's most of the base coat done. Um, we did a little bit of dry brushing before we're gonna do the wash, and then I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes so that nothing str else strange happens. Um, and then we're going to do the washes and any details that haven't stood out quite enough we'll go over again with a dry brush. All right, so base coat is dry. Um, I'm going to do some washes first and admittedly I'm going to be using the Citadel. 
because that's what I have and I didn't really have time to mix up anything special. So let's start with the brown. I'm going to use the Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use one of the longer, skinnier brushes so that I can get into the detail areas really easy and it holds a lot of the wash in it. And start on one side, let it work its way in. I don't know if you've noticed our little fly friend over here, but uh, his name is Hubert. He's a son of a bitch. <laughs> and we use this wash just out of the bottle for the leather parts. But I'm also going to use the same brown to do a wash on the white parts. But I think I'm going to mix that with some water to tone it down a little bit. I'm just trying to give it some depth, not make it brown. See, the wash just kind of brings out a little bit of those fabric folds. The wash should work the same. If you get a little too much in there, just dry your brush off and use it to soak up the excess. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit of the uh, Reichsland Flesh Shade, which has a nice red to it, and go over the leather a little bit more. Yeah, that's starting to have a nice color to it. All right, and a little bit of black. We're going to do that on the golden yellow parts. You can also use the black as in just specific areas where you want the darkest of the dark parts. So, so like back in here where the cape is going to be blocking out most of the light, you want that part really dark. So you can go back in with the black and add a little bit more. It gives a nice definition between colors too. And definitely on the weapons. And see, I put a little too much wash on his dagger there, but I like that black, so I'm gonna leave it. We're having a Bob Ross happy accident moment here. Also, it's important to remember when you're painting, it's a lot easier to add than it is to subtract. So if you start with a color, that, especially if you're not sure about what you're wanting, what you're going for, start light and you can keep adding to it, but it's gonna be a lot harder to cover it up if there's too much or if it's too strong. All right, so there's our model. Let's see what it looks like. All right, mini painting complete. Well, I can say I definitely like the cost aspect of the cheap paints, and there are a ton of colors to choose from, which is pretty nice. The paint consistency was questionable with some colors, like the white from Craftsmart. More like Crapsmart. Admittedly, there's a chance I could find another brand I like better, but I'm a busy person. 
I haven't tried any of the good paints other than the Citadel washes, so I don't really have a good basis for comparison yet. So tune in next week and we'll all find out what's up with Vallejo paints, including me. Thanks for watching, and if you liked what you saw, we'd really appreciate a like or a sub.